Today, I'm going to introduce matrix multiplication. And using this example, we'd like to introduce how to think in parallel. This is a part of the DPC++ tutorial series supported by Intel Corporation. Matrix multiplication is a very commonly used example to teach parallel programming. Let's look at this simple uh, two matrix multiply and produce the result, the product to C. So we have matrix A and B, and the product of these two matrices will be in C. The dimensions of matrix A is WA by HA, and the dimensions for matrix B is WB by HB. In order for this matrix multiplication to be valid, we have the uh, requirement of WA equals to HB. As a result, the dimensions for matrix C is going to be WB by HA. So the way we perform matrix multiplication is by taking rows from matrix A and columns from matrix B. And using these rows and columns, we do element-wise multiplication and then accumulation. And that will produce the uh, final result on the matrix C. So take specifically take C of IJ as an example. This element in matrix C will be calculated by using this particular row, ith row in matrix A, and then J's column in matrix B. And then we're going to take every element from this row, multiply those with their corresponding element in this column in matrix B. So these are element-wise multiplication, and then we accumulate the products. And that will give us the final value in the corresponding location within matrix C. So by looking at this uh, operation, we can um, realize that there are a lot of parallelism in this computation. From the higher level, uh, we can essentially multiply different rows and different columns uh, at the same time. So we can take any row in matrix A and any row in, ma in matrix B and do this element-wise multiplication accumulation. And these pairs of rows and columns can be calculated independently from each other. And so uh, to be more specific, let's look at this another, another element in matrix C. This element is at uh, the mth row and the nth column. And to get that result, we'll just need to take the mth row in matrix A and then the nth column in matrix B. And we perform similarly this element-wise multiplication and uh, accumulation. And we can do the same thing for uh, matrix, uh, for element uh, ST of uh, matrix C, and that will correspond to a different row and column in matrix, matrix A and, and B, respectively. So if we uh, implement such uh, operation using just regular C or C++ language, uh, this is something we can probably have. So what we have here first are two for loops. And the first for loop iterates through every single row uh, in matrix A. Similarly, the second for loop is to iterate over every column in matrix B. And inside uh, these two levels of for loops, we will perform the element-wise multiplication uh, and accumulation. So first, we will um, just initialize the resulting element uh, with a zero. And then we have the third for loop, which will go through every um, row and column, uh, depends on the size of WA. And then we'll go through every single element in the corresponding row and column. And we're going to perform this element-wise uh, multiplication. And the product will be accumulated into this element in matrix C. So the, um, the core part of this uh, 
computation is the element-wise multiplication and accumulation. And the first two uh, levels of for loops are basically iterating through all the rows and, and all the columns. As we explained earlier that we can take advantage of this uh, parallelism in this matrix multiplication example. Uh, and specifically, uh, what we would like to do is we're going to focus on just the calculating one single element in matrix C. And uh, this calculation will be uh, presented this um, calculation of a single element is in fact implemented as one kernel function. And based on that kernel function, at a higher level, we can uh, essentially go through uh, every row and every column. But the key part is that for every single row and every column, the uh, computation on that um, row element-wise multiplication and accumulation is the same. The only difference is the row number and the column number. So uh, we have a few lines uh, of the DPC++ program and um, this is the um, command queue that we um, created earlier and we're going to submit a command to this command queue so that this computation, this kernel computation can be dispatched to the device. And this is a lambda function, uh, as we explained uh, in our earlier um, lectures. Within this lambda function, we have this, um, you know, this lambda function, in fact, defines the command uh, that will be executed. Um, the f at the very beginning, we declare several accessors. Accessors uh, are ways to access uh, the buffers in kernels. Uh, we cannot use these buffers directly uh, without using accessors. And accessors are helping us to uh, get proper access uh, from device or even from the host to these buffers. And when we declare these accessors, we'll uh, oftentimes define the mode of operations. Uh, for matrix A and B, we declare them as read operation because we expect only reading from these matrices. For uh, matrix C, uh, this accessor will be a write access because we will um, be uh, writing data to this buffer. And then we have range bracket 2. Range is an abstraction in SQL language to declare multiple dimensions and also we can have uh, specify the size of each dimensions. Uh, this num items uh, is a range variable. Uh, as it declares, it has two dimensions. So we expect to see two numbers uh, in its definition. And this first number is the size of the first row, first, sorry, the size of the first dimension. And the second number is the size of the second dimension. By size, we mean the uh, maximum value uh, in that dimension. So essentially, the first dimension will go from 0, 1, all the way up to a underscore rows minus 1. Um, likewise, the second dimension, uh, the indices will be, uh, the values in the second dimension will be from 0, 1, all the way to b columns minus 1. And then we have this h dot parallel four. This is how we can uh, define a parallel four kernel function. And op optionally, we can um, specify the name of that kernel function by using the class name. And then this uh, kernel function itself uh, will uh, include a lambda function. In this lambda function, the first item here, or well, the argument here, is the uh, variable that we're going to be using to iterate through. So by using the num underscore items, we're essentially using uh, this range variable and expect that the kernel function will iterate through all the uh, values um, in both ranges, in both dimensions. 
and this equal sign within the um, bracket uh, means that we're going to pass in this range value uh, into this um, kernel function, which itself is a lambda function. ID bracket 2, uh, i, and this is to say that for a variable i, we have a two-dimensional uh, ID variable and identifier variable. And this i will be a two-dimension, uh, will have two values. And these two values come from the two dimensions from the uh, num underscore items. Inside this lambda function, uh, we have this uh, two variables, row number and column number. And as you can see here, we are taking the values from two dimensions through this variable i. So i bracket 0 will take the current value in the first dimension, and this column will take the first, the current value in the second dimension. Uh, when we say current value, because uh, when the kernel functions are executed, they will take these uh, iterations uh, from these original uh, variables pass into this lambda function. So for each kernel, they will take different values from this range. And the next few lines, as you can see, um, this is Oh, um, so I forgot to go through these steps, uh, but this is essentially what we uh, have gone through uh, just now. And um, this uh, num number items essentially defines the problem size because we define how many rows and how many columns we will be executing these kernel functions. And we are talking about lambda function here as uh, defining the uh, kernel uh, operations. And here you can see this is very much the same uh, in the uh, traditional C++ implementation where the innermost for loop performs the element-wise multiplication and accumulation. And one uh, you know, and thing you need to notice here, uh, because we're using row numbers and column numbers, we need to use uh, this formula to calculate uh, where exactly this element we need to retrieve from matrix A and from matrix B uh, specifically, respectively. Next, uh, we will do a, a quick demo about the compilation and execution of matrix multiplication. And we will use Intel FPGA Dev Cloud uh, you can apply for a free account and you should be able to access FPG, Intel FPGA Dev Cloud.